Okay, so in the last uh, video, we were asking and considering a question that um, what is the best possible way to do error correction? And there what we meant was that uh, we want to minimize the probability of bit errors after the error correction uh, without giving up too much on the required rate. I mean, we can make rate super low, meaning we can put a lot of redundant information, redundant bits, and make sure that probability of bit error goes down. But then that defeats kind of the purpose uh, that we have in transferring uh, the information at a uh, at a fast enough rate. So uh, the question is that given certain SNR or given certain value of probability of bit errors, what is the best that we can do uh, in terms of uh, achieving the rate? How high of a rate we can get while still making the probability of bit error as low as possible? So that is uh, the question uh, that we are going to consider as we conclude this topic of error correction. Uh, now towards that, let us consider a very simple example of a binary symmetric channel. And let us say that uh, the transmitter is sending uh, the information over this binary symmetric channel at some thousand bits per second. And let us say that this BSC is super nice, its uh, flip over crossover probability P is zero. In that case, what is the uh, maximum rate at which the information can be transmitted? So that is the question. Now you can guess the answer. Uh, it is kind of obvious that because uh, there are the channel does not introduce any errors, the maximum rate of information transfer is the same at which the transmitter is sending information and so we get 1000 bits per second at the receiver. Now let us change this problem slightly and assume that P has become 1%, 0.01. And now we ask the same question, what is the maximum rate at which the information can be transmitted? Now. One answer that you may instinctively give is that the 1% of the transmitted bits are getting an error and there are a total of 1000 bits that are getting transmitted every second and so on average about 10 bits will be an error, uh, will be in error, remaining 990 bits will get through and so the rate at which the information transfer occurs is about 900 bits per second. Uh, right? I mean, you, that's what you would say. But no, this is not the right answer. Uh, why is that? Because fine, about 1% of the bits are in error, but at the receiver, how does the receiver know which bits are in error? So, receiver can't just get 990 bits uh, like that because it doesn't know which 10 bits to remove out of its consideration. Uh, more specifically, and, and this is uh, one of the nice what-if thought experiment that you can do, which is to say that suppose if the probability P uh, over here, it is not 1% but it becomes 50%, uh, P becomes 0.5. So in that case, what will be the rate of information transfer? According to this answer, you would say that when P is 0.5, you can get 50% of the bits through, the remaining 50% don't get through, and therefore the rate of information transfer will be 500 bits per second. But that, if you think about it, is definitely not the right answer. Uh, here, maybe it is little difficult to see why 990 bits is not the right answer. But when you make P equal to 0.5, then you will right away conclude, if you think through this problem, that this method doesn't work. You, you can't get 500 uh, bits per second when P is equal to 0.5. Uh, so why is that? Why, why when P is equal to 0.5, why is it that we can't say that the information transfer is uh, half of the transmitted rate which is 
half of 1000 which is 500 bits per second why can't we say that so toward that let us uh, go back and uh, look at uh, the uh, one of the labs that you have done which is this lab number 3 and specifically i want to bring your attention to uh, this repetition code over binary symmetric channel and uh, you were asked to uh, compute the odds in favor of 1 uh, when you get a particular value of 5. Uh, this particular question, I hope uh, you all have addressed it uh, during your lab. It will remind you that if you did this calculation of odds, there uh, the coding scheme kind of doesn't work at all when this probability p becomes 0.5. Basically, what is odds in favor of x equal to 1? It's like we are evaluating two, two possibilities, x equal to 1, x equal to 0. And um, if we say that x equal to 1 is highly likely, then odds in favor of 1 become much greater than 1. Whereas if we say that uh, x equal to 0 is more, more likely, then odds in favor of 0 go up and up compared to 1. When x and, uh, equal to 0 and x equal to 1 are equally likely, both the odds are 1. Uh, and, and so, uh, odd is, odds in favor of x equal to 1 is 1, odds in favor of x equal to 0 is also 1. That is like what you would get if you just flip a coin, a fair coin. Uh, you'll get the odds in favor of x equal to 1 and odds in favor of x equal to 0 to be same and both to be equal to 1. And so in that connection, look at this figure here, uh, where I have plotted the odds in favor of x equal to 1 for a uh, case when repetition coding of uh, rate 1 fifth is used. And if the receiver gets all ones, then the odds in favor of 1 go up very fast. That is what is shown over here unless p is equal to 0.5 then the odds in favor of 1 become 1 if you get 4 ones and 1 zero this is how the odds progress if you get 3 ones and 2 zeros this is how odds progress in favor of 1 but the point to be noted is that when p is equal to 0.5 you don't get any information at all it's as if you can disconnect your receiver from the channel. You can just remove uh, the cable, uh, let the receiver operate on its own, and uh, or, or even you can just uh, flip a coin uh, and get a particular value of y. You don't have to uh, get any um, actual output from the channel at all. So with that, uh, in consideration, what we can say now is that uh, for this particular case when uh, p is equal to 0.5, you do not get any information at all. In fact, the rate of information transfer becomes zero. Um, so now how to see that mathematically? And so we'll go through a sequence of uh, logical uh, steps at the end of which we will prove that when p is equal to 0.5, the rate of information transfer has to become zero. We can't transmit any information whatsoever. But more importantly, this sequence of logical steps is going to tell us what is the best coding rate that we can achieve, the rate r. Uh, the question that we were trying to answer over here given p or snr what is the 
best channel coding scheme that will maximize R while minimizing the probability of error. What is the maximum value of R that we can get without incurring any error whatsoever? That is also another question that we'll be answering as a part of this thought process. And so towards that, right away we will uh, recall our model of the binary symmetric channel where we have said this earlier, uh, that it can be thought of as a, as a uh, uh, memoryless source, a discrete memoryless source, uh, which generates binary string uh, where probability of one is equal to p. And now I will bring your attention to the concept of typical sets that we had studied prior to exam number two. And I ask you how many different binary strings can the uh, BSC generate uh, with a probability of P, uh, with a probability that uh, the generated string has one that equals P. So when the length of the string is small, we can't say. But as n tends to infinity, the typical set overpowers all the other subsets and the noise that is introduced by the binary symmetric channel gets trapped into a typical set of size 2 to the power n times h b of p, where h b of p is this binary entropy function. Now, what does that translate meaningfully? Is that suppose if you transmit an n bit long code word which is shown by this green dot, then at the receiver you can at the most see one of these black dots. And the total size of this set is 2 to the power n times h b of p. This is exactly the definition of typical set applied to a case where an n bit code word, the green dot, is transmitted over a binary symmetric channel where flip over probability is p. You transmit this green uh, sequence of length n bit, but you can get any one of these black sequences also of n bits, except that the size of this set is not 2 to the power n. It is 2 to the power n times h b of p. Okay, that, that is our uh, entire conceptualization of typical sets. And so now with that, let us consider a case where we transmitted uh, n bits uh, over the binary symmetric channel and each of the code word can turn into n times uh, 2 to the power n times h b of p received words. How will the scenario look like? That is shown over here. Conceptually, this is no different from the concept of Hemming spheres that we have already seen earlier. If you recall, we did the Hemming sphere concept uh, some time ago. This is the conceptual diagram that we had studied some time ago. The diagram that we are now looking at is conceptually no different from that. It is, in fact, uh, even visually it looks very similar, except here we are saying something little more strongly. Each of these ovals that we are looking at is guaranteed to contain the received n bit long sequence when the transmitted sequence is the green uh, coded or green colored sequence at the center of that uh, oval. The reason why the received sequence cannot be outside of this oval is because of the typical set property applied to the binary symmetric channel. Now what is the size of this uh, smaller oval? Obviously, it is 2 to the power n times h b of p. That is what we just now looked at. It's 2 to the power n times h b of p. What is the size of the outer oval? It is obviously 2 to the power n because that is how many 
binary sequences that you can get. Now, if you want to do minimum distance decoding, minimum Hamming distance decoding the way that we have formulated earlier, then we have specific answer that we can instead of using all 2 to the power n possible uh, binary sequences as a code word, we will select only 2 to the power n times 1 minus hb of p such sequences basically this green uh, dots as the transmitted code words and when each of this transmitted code word turns into uh, uh, an erroneous sequence then uh, basically we will get any one of 2 to the power n possible received sequences uh, so basically we send one of 2 to the power n times 1 minus hb of p code words each of them can turn into 2 to the, two to the power n times hb of p black dots but by virtue of minimum distance decoding and by virtue of typical sets we are guaranteed at the receiver to recover the original transmitted code word without any error that is exactly what this diagram says and therefore what now we can say is that although we are transmitting n bits of coded sequence effectively in terms of being able to select the messages we have constrained our hands effectively we are selecting one of two to the power n times one minus hb of p number of sequences those green dots and the remaining n times hb of p bits that we are sending is just to overcome the effect of noise that is what is shown here n times hb of p bits out of n bits we are forced to use as redundancy bits that will overcome the effect of the noise and therefore the maximum rate of information transfer becomes n times n minus n times hb of p and now you can see that when p is equal to 0.5 hb of p is 1 and therefore this function n minus n times hb of p does drop to 0 that is the answer that we were expecting we'll continue this uh, in the next uh, video